Young shout out to Long Beach, California, East Side, Cambodia town. Rap name Stupid Young. Went to prison for a little charge, got out, trying to pick up on my music where I left, where I left back. Yeah, shit happened, you know, shit happened. Caught a little case with the homie. Can we talk a little bit about uh, the case? Oh, this is a 459, that's it. A little burglary. Trying to get a little money, that's all. Went out on bail, took me. Tried to fight my case a little bit, got lowered, went to prison. Not that long, like a year and some change. I felt like, oh shit, I'm about to go back to jail. I don't know if I'm gonna go to the pen, county, whatever. Went to the pen though for a little bit. Was that your first visit to the pen? Yeah, first visit, gained a little weight. <laughs> visit a couple homies. So, uh, what was that like? Because now it's not just the county. Now they're sending you up to a penitentiary. It was cool. It wasn't that bad. I ain't gonna lie. I was, on, I was only on the level one and two, so it wasn't that bad. I was already in parole. I had a fresh strike, so. And then I just, you know, got caught doing it again. And I was like, yeah, I'm probably gonna go to the pen. I didn't do too long, so, you know, trying to pick up where I left off. So how do you feel that, uh, so what was your um, final sentence? What did they give you, three what? Three way, 80. 80 went down to 60, 66. So I did like, some, plus I had do a little thing to get my milestones and stuff like that. Which you, they let you go to class, you get a couple weeks knocked off. So basically it was a three year sentence. Yeah, I did like one and some change. So, so it could have been that you had to do your whole three if you get in trouble, right? Yeah, yeah, if it was a violent, I had non-violent though, you know they got all these new laws passing. So uh, non-violent went down to like 33. So were you bailed out the whole time or were you in the county? No, I was bailed out. But then like on my third time going back and forth to court, they took me in. Like, oh, he on, he on felony uh, probation. So when I got out the pen, they put me on parole. Well, I went to rece reception in Delano on the sea yard. It was cool. Then I went to a uh, Jamestown fire camp, which is more like more and more or easier to do your time. I didn't make it a fire camp, I stayed in fire camp reception. Then I went to a halfway house from there, to downtown LA halfway house. Now it seems like you was creating a, a serious buzz before you went to the prison. Yeah, kind of on both sides, just wilding in the streets, doing the music. Shit was, you know, couldn't keep a balance. <laughs> so I think it's fair to say that you're an example of, you can't have your foot fully in the streets. Yeah, yeah, you got to choose up, man. You got to <laughs> choose. Either you, you can't be half-assed with none of it. You want to be full-time gangman, full-time musician, whatever you want to do. And when you hit the yard, did some of them already know who you were because yeah. of your social media and yeah. your music? Yeah, they what, did. What was that like? They were just surprised seeing me in there. They were like, man, what the fuck you doing in here? <laughs> they are like, what, you came back? Or you, what you doing, man? Like, you know, you going back to the old lifestyle? Telling me, stay out, man stay out because not a lot of people get the opportunity. So I guess it's a trip to be in prison and, and be watching Stupid Young on a video on their cell phone and then they look up. Yeah, yeah. He's on the yard. My shit came on the TV over there. The PBS, the little PBS thing I did, it came on the TV in there. And all the mess, and some people, I didn't go in there talking about, oh, I rap, I do this, this is who I am. They just found out. I wouldn't tell them until they, un unless they told me. So what do you got planned now? Um, now that you're out, Musically, what, what's the, the, the plan here? Just continue my music. I just dropped two videos since I came out, working on more, working on a project, trying to get features, trying to do all this, you know, shit to make a way for my people. Not just me, but for my people. Now, I heard Snoop has been reaching back to his old Long Beach roots and, and looking for artists. Have you ever thought in the back of your mind, you know, maybe Snoop might be interested in an Asian from Long Beach? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it come, you know, it come, but I'm going to just keep doing my thing. I'm not going to go on my way, reach, you know, reach to him, but, you know, it's good that he's get, he giving back to the city. Finally, you know, shedding light on some people in the city. So what's it like now when you got out? What month did you get out, and what's it been like since you've been home? I was, I got out around March, April. It's, it's been, man, it's been rough trying to get back here on my feet. A lot of shit changed, music changed, um, all my old plugs gone, my connections, but I just, trying to pick up where I left off. So, you know, the music shit going kind of good. Okay, so how so has the, um, the music changed? It's a lot of auto-tune, you know, people uh, went more to the trap sound, auto-tune-ish, but it's cool, because I'm a diverse artist, I can do both. I started rapping just lyrically, but I could, now my new tape is more like auto-tune too. And what happened to your, your plugs and your connects? 
some of them, you know, just either moved up or just got I lost the contact, this and that. That's all. But I know I'm gonna pick up where I left off. It ain't. I just gotta keep doing what I do. Now, when we we hooked up with you last, the guys on the north side of Long Beach really weren't buzzing. Now you come home. This yeah, guy, one of the dudes, got to deal with Snoop. Yeah, yeah, buzzing. I mean, I'm happy for it though. Shit, the whole the, the city, man. You know, make the city look good, but. At the same time, I'm worried about myself too, I'm trying to get myself on, you know? It still sounds like a struggle. Man, it is. <laughs> it ain't easy, especially for Asian artists. <laughs> that shit ain't, ain't easy. I kind of like use what I learned in prison, the prison politics on, out here. It's like it goes the same for the rap game, it's not a lot of us. It's a very few that got it, but not a lot of us. You know, and I feel like I got the potential, so why keep doing it? If I didn't feel like I didn't have the potential, I ain't gonna waste my time. I often read in the comments when I interview uh, different Asians and Cambodians from Long Beach, they always ask, well, why do they talk black? Yeah, yeah. Or why do they sound black? But yeah, they don't yeah. understand that's sort of the way the cultures are kind of overlaid here in Long Beach. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how we grew up. That's the environment we live in. That shit, you know, how can they blame us? That's how we was raised. I can't change how I talk and shit. All my people talk like that. <laughs> what, what can we do about it? Now, let me ask you about using... Um, saying nigga, uh, you say it a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I'm assuming you've never had a problem saying it. I mean, I never had a problem growing up, middle school, uh, high school, I never, jail, county jail, juvenile hall, I never had a problem with it. You know, it must be a Cali thing or something. I don't know about the Asians different, in different states, but I can speak for the homies out here in California, I don't know. That's just how we was raised and we was brought up. I mean, when I talk to my fellow blacks like that from insane in the 20s, like, what's up, nigga, what's up, cuz, you know what I'm saying? Like, there ain't none, so. Why well, I'ma change up, you know, change up how I really was right. Anything specifically that you got coming out? Titles, names? Yeah, I'm working on a tape called No Days Off. And uh, I got that title, I made that when I was in jail because I was thinking like, man, I t a whole year, a year ain't shit. That's, that's the, you know, any prisoner, anybody who been in prison a couple terms, they could tell you a year ain't nothing. But that whole year fucked up my music shit. I could have done, done a lot in that year. You know, who knows where I would be? And. Uh, I took a lot of days off, more than 365, so now I can't take no days off. And did you write a lot in prison? Yeah, I wrote a lot, I wrote a lot, constantly. So, so this uh, this project that you just mentioned, was most of it or all of it written in prison? Uh, I wrote a lot of material that I'm gonna record that was in prison, but I didn't record it when I got out. All of this is new, because when I, like I said, when I came out, the music scene changed. You know what I'm saying? So now this tape I'm dropping is kind of like, Okay, I'm gonna do what y'all been doing when I was gone. And then the next day probably be like my prison shit and you know, whoever gonna watch this video, stay tuned for my music because I'm coming. That's it, I'm coming. 2017, all my shit dropping. Thanks for watching StreetGangs.com. Please like and share the video you just watched and leave a comment below to tell us what you think. You can also watch two of our previous episodes to the right. Please visit the link to our Patreon page and support our campaign. And don't forget to subscribe.